This is the Sean Hannity Show podcast. The Sean Hannity Show. Let me ask you the question this way. Should a president's faith matter? Should your faith matter to voters? Oh, well, I guess it depends on what that faith is. If, if it's inconsistent uh, with the values and principles of America, then of course it should matter. But uh, if it fits within the realm of, uh, of America and consistent with the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, no problem. So do you believe that uh, Islam is consistent with the Constitution? Uh, no, I don't. I do not. I, I would not advocate that we put a Muslim in charge of this nation. I absolutely would not agree with that. And you, would you ever consider voting for a Muslim for Congress? Uh, Congress is a, is, a, is a different story, but it depends on who that Muslim is and what their policies are, just as it depends on what anybody else says. You know. and, and, you know, if there's somebody who's uh, of any faith, but they say things and their life has been consistent with things that will elevate this nation mm -hmm. and make it possible for everybody to succeed and bring peace and harmony, then I'm, I'm with them. And I take it you believe the president was born in the United States and is a Christian? I believe that he is. I, I have no reason to, to doubt what he says. The Constitution of the United States, which clearly says that, and I have it here, no religious test shall be ever required as a qualification to any office or public trust under the United States in pure English. This cannot be misunderstood. It cannot be um, twisted around. This is a very clear language to all Americans, to all generations, irrespective of who they are. The protection of freedom of religion in America is a fundamental principle of our country. So whether you're Christian, you're Jewish, you're Muslim, you're Catholic, you're black, you're brown, you're white, if you are born in this country, if you uphold the Constitution, if you have the vision, if you fit to lead, you can lead irrespective of your faith tradition. Not long ago, some people thought that a Catholic cannot be a president. An African-American cannot be a president. They were wrong then, and they are wrong now. And that's why we say Mr. Ben Carson is wrong today to assume and say that American Muslim cannot be a president of the United States. His views are inconsistent with the United States Constitution. For that, we really urge politicians, the general public, community leaders, presidential candidates to repudiate his views. And we ask Mr. Ben Carson to withdraw from the presidential race because he's unfit to lead, because his views are in contradiction with the United States Constitution. Let's go back and take a little trip down memory lane. That was uh, the radical spokesman for CARE making that statement about Ben Carson. Ben Carson's statement now has come under fire. But uh, And George Stephanopoulos tried to drag Donald Trump back into the Obama birther debate yesterday. He refused to take the, ba de the debate in that case. Uh, how come old George never asked his old boss, Hillary? Oh, that's right. He's part of the Clinton Foundation to explain her beliefs about where Obama was born, since, according to Politico, you can argue that Hillary might have been the first, quote, birther. The media doesn't seem to want to talk about this. So where did all of this come from? Uh, this was the Democratic Party. And at the time, Democratic presidential primary is slipping away from Hillary and some of her passionate supporters were grasping for something and anything that would deal a final reversal to Barack Obama. And as Obama marched towards the presidency in 2008, well, anyway, a new suggestion emerged that he was not eligible to serve. And that theory first emerged in the spring of 08 as Clinton supporters circulated an anonymous email questioning Obama's citizenship. Barack Obama's mother was living in Kenya with an Arab uh, African father late in her preg pregnancy. She was not allowed to travel by plane then, so Barack Obama was born there, and his mother then took him to Hawaii to register his birth, asserted one chain email that surfaced on the urban legend site Snopes.com. I mean, was that from the Hillary campaign or... You know, since the media is still going after Donald Trump and Ben Carson for not correcting 
In the case of Donald Trump, the supporter who called Obama a Muslim, I don't remember Hillary ever apologizing for trying to convince voters that he might have been. Uh, you might remember that the Daily Caller had all the details uh, that in 2008, Politico ran a piece criticizing Clinton's campaign for supplying the Drudge Report with a photo of Obama dressed as a Somali elder during his visit there in, in to a rural area in northeastern Kenya. Well, that was the Clinton campaign. And then she also one time said to Steve Croft on 60 Minutes, well, he's not a Muslim as far as I know. You, you don't believe that Senator Obama's a Muslim? Of course not. I mean, that's, you know, that there is no basis for that. You know, I take him uh, on the basis of what he says. And, you know, there isn't any reason to doubt that. You said you take Senator Obama at his word that he's not right, a Muslim. You right. don't believe that he's a Muslim. No, I mean, no, why would I? Implying, There's no, right? no there, there is nothing to, to base that on, as far as I know. It's, as far as I know... Imagine if Donald Trump or Ben Carson said that. Joining us, Brigitte Gabriel, also Mike Gauss and Dr. Zudi Jasser. Thank you all for being with us. Let's start with the Ben Carson comment first, Brigitte, and him saying that asked about faith and is Islam consistent with the Constitution, which he said is his standard, and do you think he crossed the line? No, I do not think he crossed the line. I think he answered the question very wisely. Islam is not consistent with the Constitution of the United States because Islam is a political movement cloaked in religion. It is very different than the Judeo-Christian uh, uh, value system and religion, the way we practice religion. And so Ben Carson was justified, especially in bringing up uh, the Sharia aspect of what Islam is all about and why it is not compatible with the United States Constitution. And I also agree with him with the way he qualified what would make a qualified Islamic president, if we're going to elect one, somebody who here's, adheres here's to the Constitution. Here's a question. Do the majority of Muslim countries have strong restrictions, for example, on women's rights, what they can wear, where they can go? Do the majority of Muslim countries have that? Yes, the majority of Muslim countries adhere to Sharia law. And actually, the Pew Research did a poll in 2013 where they interviewed Muslims from uh, Muslim countries around the world. It was an extensive report asking, would you like to see Sharia law as the law of the land? And would you like to see uh, the, an Islamic state established? And the five top countries in the world with the largest majority Islamic concentration, Indonesia, for example, 204 million Muslims, uh, you take Tunisia, Bangladesh, uh, Nigeria, uh, Egypt, and, and, and uh, uh, Pakistan, and 77% of those who, are inter who were interviewed from these countries, 77% of these Muslims believe that they want Islam right, Sharia me, law as the law of the land let me and ask the this Islamic question. state established. What is the most, as you look at the landscape of Muslim countries, which one would you describe as having the most liberal policies and most freedom, for example, for women? Oh, boy. Uh, well, let me ask Mike Gauss the question. Which which country would you point to to say that that Islam being the predicate of the foundation of the society is the most liberal in terms of its treatment of women and others in Sharia? Sean, before I answer the question, I want to tell no, you. No, 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 no. I want you to answer the no, question. It's important. I love you, Sean. From the last four days, in every Muslim gathering, I am telling people to look at your point of view, and people are appreciating you instead of the t typical hate for you is transforming to see your point of view, which is the right point of view to question everything. Does, I just wanted to say that. Oh, I appreciate that. Now, does that mean you're going to vote for, for a Republican instead of a Democrat this time? Well, I have to see the candidate, like Ben Carson said. I have to see if that candidate is good for my country. That is the criteria. I'm independent now, and I'll do. I'm not right. blinded by the loyalty. Let's go. To, let's go. Tell me the country that you think the Islamic country with the most liberal laws supporting women's rights, etc. Which country would you point to? Turkey, Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, uh, let me say Bangladesh. Okay, and how are women treated in those countries? I mean, like any other woman in other religious groups, as much as you can tell. You, if you apply one law to a Muslim woman in uh, India, for example, or Bangladesh, same thing applies with uh, Hindus, Christians, and Jews, and Sikhs. 
Okay, do women have to cover, for example, in those countries? Not, no, not the majority of most Muslim. But hasn't hasn't Turkey become more radicalized in recent years? I wouldn't call it radicalized. They're getting a little more culturalized into the hijab culture, but that, that doesn't mean they're radicals. But doesn't uh, is is that your assertion? Do you agree with that? Yes, I and do. Brigitte, do you agree with that? Culturalized into the hijab culture? That's a new way of putting it. Uh, that's that putting, uh, that's way, making lemonade out of lemon. Uh, yes, uh, Turkey is becoming more radicalized into Islamic extremism, especially headed by Erdogan, the, 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 uh, 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 the head of Turkey, who is saying that in Islam, there's no radical Islam, there's no moderate Islam. Islam is Islam is Islam. And that's coming from the mouth of the leader in Turkey, which is heading in the opposite direction towards more radicalism, more hijabic into women, more men wearing beards, and it's a sliding slope into darkness. Let me bring in Dr. Zudi Jasser with us. Americans are like... Dr. Dr. Jasser, your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you, Sean, uh, you know, that's an important question, but we have to thread the needle. We're just finishing seven years of a president who was a complete apologist for Islamists, and now we have a chance to reboot our strategy, not only globally, but let's look domestically. There are Muslims who are going through that same time in history that our founding fathers, and I'd ask Dr. Carson to look at Dr. Benjamin Rush, who helped uh, um, Thomas Paine write Common Sense, and he said the worst tyranny of all is the tyranny of religions. So why can't Muslims be going through this same process of... You see, I actually take the position that the American people, I I think anybody, if they're a citizen and, and they're born in this country naturalized in this country, then they have the right to run. And I, I just think that anybody that supported any version of radicalized Islam or, or Sharia would never get elected. But my question to you is very different, and that is, name me the most moderate Muslim country and how their treatment of women is. There isn't one. There's no doubt that Muslims in America are uniquely responsible for manifesting an American form of Islam that reforms, and, and candidates like, like presidential candidate Carson need to work with reformist Muslims that are pragmatic, that are honest, that realize that the majority of Muslims uh, have to push back against Islamists. The Tunisians, Sean, just had an election in which they rejected the Islamists. The Egyptians went to the street in the millions and rejected, but yet there's no doubt we haven't reformed political Islam. And I would agree with him that Islam Islamists are not compatible with the Constitution and should not be given security clearances, congressional appointments, uh, hold office in any form. And we should push back no different than we do against communists or socialists. But yet uh, um, Muslims that are anti-Islamists, that are part of our coalition of reform, that are patriots, that serve in our military and want to be at the head of the spear, uh, like our organization at the American Islamic Forum, do you, you do can't you, dismiss us because we're just Muslims. Right, I, and, and Zudi, I would say you're, you're a perfect person, but you do not embody mainstream Islam. I mean, you're a reformer. You're calling for reform of Islam. And that means, you know, you're saying that, that moderate Islam does not exist as practiced in any other country that you could name. So I think what Dr. Carson might be saying or suggesting here is based on the fact that no country that is ruled by uh, an Islamic leader is is practicing values consistent with American values. That's I, that's I how I that. take his comments. That's why, my, that's why my family came here. But I would tell him that if, if Christianity took 1,789 years to render under Caesar what is Caesar and the gods what is God's, Muslims are only 1,430 plus years into our history. And we are going through that same time in history right now. And American leadership can either recognize that we take sides within the House of Islam with those who are liberals or believe in liberty against the Islam. Yeah, but Dr. Jasser, you, you, you admit you are an anomaly. You are not mainstream. You are you are on the outskirts exactly of trying to right. reform a religion that is resistant to any change. And and frankly, you may end up dying for your beliefs. Uh, well, you're exactly true, right when it comes to the leadership. But when it comes to the people... Tunisia, Egypt, so many countries are proving that they don't want Islam. I got it, but they, they, they don't have any say, do they? Not they yet, do. because American Tunisia, policy, Tunisia. Western policy has right. not helped Hang them on, I want, to continue, I want to continue this. We want to continue this discussion. We'll also get you to join in as well. 800-941-SEAN is our number. You want to be a part of the program. 
Hannity Headline. A bite-sized version of the show that you can take with you anywhere you go. To sign up today for Hannity Headlines, go to Hannity.com. All right, when we come back, we'll continue our debate with Brigitte and Mike Allison, and Dr. Zudi Jasser. Hannity tonight, uh, 10 Eastern, Scott Walker now out of the race. Uh, we'll also check in with Ben Carson, who has come under fire for what he has said about not wanting a Muslim president. Uh, we'll get to that. Hugh Hewitt joins it. By the way, why didn't, he, why didn't CNN talk to Hugh Hewitt during that debate? How many questions did he get? Three? It's ridiculous. He had the best questions. Brigitte Gabriel and Dr. Robert Jeffers will comment on Iran's nuclear deal, faith and politics, and a Muslim president. Also, the Pope is in Cuba. We've got a refugee crisis. Should we be taking in refugees from Syria? Marco Rubio is with us. And also the latest on this controversy of this Muslim team with the clock, Ahmad. 10 Eastern, Hannity Fox. We know you never want to miss the Sean Hannity Show. And now you never have to. Just sign up for Hannity Headlines. A bite-sized version of the show that you can take with you on your laptop, your mobile phone, everywhere you go. Even to your liberal in-laws place in Vermont. So, um... Yeah. And after a few hours of that, you'll be glad you brought Sean along. To sign up today for Hannity Headlines, go to Hannity.com. To the Sean Hannity Show. You know what the problem is in this country, one of the problems we got is this willingness to take sides in a fight like this without knowing what the hell happened. And it it is amazing. Everybody goes right to their battle stations. I'm with the minority. The minority's right. Those teachers are wrong. How do you know? The, the, I wasn't there. You weren't there. The problem is, I don't know. Is this, how do you know? No, Chris. Everybody's an expert. It's all cartoon. Everything's a fucking cartoon. No, the liberals can't. Uh, I'm glad you a said fourteen year old. <laughs> a fourteen year old was arrested but, but for doing a liberals science project. Cannot, no, no, there wasn't no, a science project, right? Right. He the, should not have been arrested, but he should have opened his mouth and had right, a conversation exactly. about it. He, he was should a, have said, this is not a bomb. He was arrested, and, and they took him off in cuffs and then put him in a cage and burned him. Oh, no, that's yeah. ISIS who does that. No, you know, they're, 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 you know what? We, we arrested, we put a kid after school for a couple of hours. This is not the end of the world. But you know what? The end of the world does happen all over the world for nice. millions of it's, Muslims it's, uh, who are the victims of other Muslims, of their religion. Where are the liberals on this? You know what? There's a there's a Saudi who is right now, he was arrested. His name is Ali Muhammad Al Nim, or N M N I M R. I don't know how you pronounce that. He was arrested for an anti being at an anti government rally a few years ago. Today he lost his final legal appeal to not be crucified. So they're going to crucify him, okay. crucify him, and then behead him in case the crucifixion didn't work. So if you haven't used up all your heroism. Hashtagging for the clock kid. Maybe do it for this guy. That was Bill Maher and Chris Matthews in an exchange over the weekend. Now, Maher went on to say, someone look me in the eye and tell me over the last 30 years, if so many Muslim, young Muslim men, and this kid, Ahmad, was 14 years old, uh, that never, that nothing ever happened before. They haven't blown up a lot of beep around the world. And he said, you know, it, it Muslim men had created suspicion because of their radical actions, basically, to paraphrase what he's saying. We continue with Brigitte Gabriel, Mike Gauss, and Dr. Zudi Jasser. Mike, that makes sense. I well, mean, it I, does I, make sense, and uh, as Muslims, we have to take some responsibility for what has been projected out there, and we need to start integrating in the society and take steps to prevent this, that is on our side. But the problem is radical Islam is growing like a cancer, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. you got entire states now that are being taken over by ISIS and al-Qaeda. You know, here America probably would like to, on any other, at any other time, take in refugees from Syria and Iraq. You know why I say we can't take in these, these refugees? Because our National Intelligence Director, James Clapper, our State Department, have both told us that ISIS and al-Qaeda will infiltrate the refugee community uh, so that they can get to Western Europe and the United States to commit acts of terror. So where we otherwise would probably help people out, we're not in a position to do so now, Mike. Whose fault is that? Well, I have written three powerful press releases 
at AmericanMuslimInstitution.org. I have addressed uh, Ahmad, I have addressed Ben Carson, and uh, Donald Trump, three powerful... Well, I'm president. glad you think everything you write is so powerful, but that doesn't answer my question. How could, why should America, if we're told by our intelligence professionals that ISIS and al-Qaeda will infiltrate the refugee population to sneak in here, why should we take in one person? I argue we should not. Well, we should not take if they are vetted, gone through the full process. Mike, ha- Mike, Mike, what process? They don't have driver's licenses. They don't have passports. They're not going to be handing in birth certificates. How do you know? There should be a process of questioning no. them. In a the questioning them. them. All right. So let's, whoa, whoa, whoa. let's go down the line of questioning. All right. Are you a terrorist? No. Are you coming here as a refugee? Yes. Okay, you're in. How do you tell the difference no, that between... No, not that simple, Sean. It should be a fully complicated system to ask uh, uh, a very subtle question to see if there is any inkling of extremism in them. Hey, hey, but the problem, Mike, here. they're trained. They're media savvy. They no, know they, the they, refugees, the poor people who want to stay in there. I am Syria. saying that the ISIS fighters and the Al-Qaeda fighters, they're going to be trained to lie. And there is always that possibility, and that's why we need to have a That's right, because it's a possibility. Process. No, because it's a possibility, nobody gets in. Brigitte. They shouldn't get in. If there are Arabic countries who are surrounding them in the region where they speak the same language, where they are even intermarried into some people living in those Arabic countries, if those Arabic countries are refusing to take them because of the national security threat, that should tell us something. And therefore, not one of them should come to the United States. All of them should stay in the Middle East. It is a security threat. And I urge people who are listening to go to actforamerica.org. We are sending an action alert tomorrow about two bills now introduced in Congress to stop Obama from bringing more Syrian refugees into the country. We need you to get these emails. Go to our website, actforamerica.org, and get involved in stopping refugee resettlement in the United States. Let me ask Dr. Jasser. Dr. Jasser, is it because of the actions of, of Muslim men around the world and, and their connection to terror, not all Muslims, but those that are radicalized, Does that then make this 14-year-old boy a suspect because of the actions of so many that have committed acts of terror? Well, certainly we have to have smart homeland security. And this hyper-victimization where you take a privileged kid in Texas and all of a sudden it becomes this, uh, all of a sudden America becomes a problem when in fact so many missed episodes in the past have been criticized. I mean, come on, what happened to the president hashtagging as Bill Maher has said, hashtagging about the prisoners, that the true Muslim heroes in Saudi Arabia or Muslims working for reform that are whipped in front of mosques or in, or in any of these other countries that we ignore. But no, a, a Muslim here in Texas who's privileged, whose dad, by the way, happened to run for president of Sudan, so I wonder what, what agenda they have. Uh, the bottom line is, Sean, when you look at the refugees and the risks, listen, we have to look at the bigger picture. The smaller picture is absolutely, there's ISIS already in all 50 states, but if you're looking at families like mine that came because they love America, my family's in Syria, dodging bombs, dodging chemical weapons, the majority of these refugees see the West, see America as that city on a hill. All right, but Zudi, Zudi, here's the problem. Our national intelligence director, our intelligence officials are saying that it's not a matter of if, It's a matter that they will infiltrate the refugee community. That means if we take in refugees, among them will be terrorists. Why should America risk that? Because the bigger picture is losing the well, the, the bigger war of picture. ideas. There is yes, but we took. But wait a minute! But the bigger the picture is that 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 it means that Americans will likely die. The threat is here. Most of the. Uh, but then, but wait a minute! But why make grown? the threat worse? Because these millions are destroying the Middle East right now. and there's I, no, But, but you know wanna... something, I, 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 I appreciate what you're saying, but America cannot absorb all the world's problems. We have 94 million Americans out of the labor force, 50 million in, in poverty, and 46 million Americans on food stamps. We can well, barely we take care of no fly zone. We should have had a red line that meant. I agree. I agree allowed. with we you. Have safe zones but that Syria, doesn't but... mean we should take in refugees when we are being told that 
that radical Islamists and terrorists will infiltrate that population so that they can wreak havoc on this country again. So what does our Statue of Liberty mean then? What, what, what is the, of, the country that my family came to? What, what, you know, we, when what does America stand for? America stands for a lot of things. I'm not saying that there aren't other ways that we can help these refugees. You know, America's taken in more refugees than every other country combined up until this point. And I don't well, think America I, mean, I don't think America needs to be the the one and only country that's stuck, you know, taking care of the world's refugees when we can't even afford to feed our own people. So I agree with you. All it is is rather than just have ten thousand that are from two well, years ago. Now they're ago talking about two hundred thousand. And and the two hundred is gonna become five hundred, and five hundred is gonna be a million. And that's exactly what is happening. And that's exactly what is happening. And we cannot afford to, for because of national security and other burdens that they are putting on the communities. Not to mention the ISIS threat. Germany today arrested an ISIS recruiter posing as an asylum seeker. This is what's coming here to our country. And I am an immigrant as well. I am somebody who came here to the United States. America needs immigrants like us, Zuhdi, like you and me, who come here to make America and great. Not refugees who are coming, who are who are terrorists posing as refugees. We cannot afford this risk right now. We are at war. Right, let me, let me, hang way, on, hang we on. We had refugees, we, we had refugies, Christians refugees. from Sudan guys, and the Congo. Guys, we got to go one at a time. All right, let's go to the phones and slow things down a bit. Juliana is in Washington, D.C. Juliana, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I just wanted to say one thing. The Iraqi Christian Relief Council just did a study, gathered information from the U.N. and the State Department. 89.96% of refugees that came from Syria were Muslim. Only 6.42% Christians were let in. I, too, am a Christian. I came as a refugee. But the flood of refugees that are, uh, is on its way to Europe, I believe, it's a part of a bigger plan of Islamic domination of Europe and then America. Well, our intelligence is saying that very thing. Uh, by the way, Lauren just told me you have a rally tonight for victims of ISIS. Where is that? We do. We do. It's in, uh, un it's in Washington, D.C. at 7 p.m. at um, Mount Vernon United Methodist Church. We are uh, welcoming the Pope, really, to the United States, but we're asking him to mobilize the Holy See to really bring to the forefront even more than what he's done, the plight of the Assyrian Christians and Yazidis of Iraq and Syria. Not, you know, we yeah, haven't done anything so to take, we, we haven't done anything do to so help much. these people. I, know, I assume you know my friend Narain, who comes on this program often. Yes, and, absolutely. And she's a rock star. We, these Christians are being slaughtered and we haven't done anything. And now you've exactly. got, now we're taking in the president. First thing he's going to do, we ignored the Christians uh, and the Ascites, but now we're going to take in all of these Muslims, and they start with 200,000, and it's going to go much higher. Well, you said something so important. We cannot bear this burden. We cannot bring the whole world problem to this country. So what we have to do is to really try to um, defeat this Islamic ideology, defeat ISIS, so we can return these people home. Yeah. There were doctors that I met in Jordan when I was there about a month ago. They said, we will never be able to be doctors in America. We won't be able to be doctors in Jordan. We want to go back home. And they have the right to go back to their ancestral homeland. So if we, people want to know more about this, and if they want to help financially to help these people be sustained, please visit Victims of ISIS.org, victims of ISIS.org. All right, Juliana, thank you. Good luck at your rally tonight. Uh, Zudi, let me go to you. America was founded, it's indisputable, it's incontrovertible on Judeo Christian principles. If you can't name a single Muslim country today that meets the standards of America in terms of human rights for women and minorities and other religions, etc., um, doesn't that raise questions about the, the general state of Islam that the American people have a right to question without being called Islamophobic? Absolutely. Americans can question Islamism and realize that today's biggest threat to our security is the OIC, which is the evil empire of today, which is every Muslim-majority country. However, either we surrender to that, Sean, or we say, you know what, we're going to have a strategy and say that the strategy is to bond with the real allies of freedom that are the, that are the prisoners of conscience in those countries, that are the movements like the well, Green Revolution. We abandoned the Iranian youth when they needed us in 2009. Obama did nothing to help them. Exactly, but they're still our allies, despite the, the uh, negligence of our commander-in-chief. All right, let's go to our phones. Eddie is in Virginia. Eddie, welcome to the Sean Hannity Show. 
Hey, Sean, how you doing? Hey, thanks for taking my call, man. Hey, I just wanted to jump in on a conversation. You know, everything that's going on here recently is all divisive. I mean, you know, I hear you talk, I listen to you all the time about, you know, Obama's dividing our country. But just think about it. This line of conversation between Ben Carson, Donald Trump, every, and even the stuff you're talking about now, this is divisive. All right, let me ask you a question if it's so divisive. All right, so our national intelligence director says that that ISIS and al-Qaeda will infiltrate the refugee population to get to the United States and Western Europe. Is that, no, not, is that, know, wait a minute, no, that, wait, whoa, 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 Should, wait, here's my question. Should we take in one refugee when our intelligence community is warning us that will happen? What, what, no, we shouldn't until they get oh, you're a very, how to bring. Oh, uh, you're a very divisive person. Bring in uh, 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 refugees, you know, that, that's uh, what you're, you're a very divisive person. You see, these are divisive issues. That's why it sounds divisive, because you have people that are on the other side of it that don't agree with you. Now, I think you're right on that argument, but, you know, I I just think this is a very complicated problem. That is the state of Islam, the radicalization of a religion, and, and the terrorism that is associated with it. Those moderates that want no part of it, sadly, their voices are far more quiet and too few in number, at least like the Zudi Jassers and the Mike Gausses of the world. Uh, guys, thank you all for being with us. We really appreciate your time. Thanks for your insight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, 800-941-SEAN, our toll-free telephone number. All right, that's going to wrap things up for today. Scott Walker out of the race. We have full coverage of that. Ben Carson will join us tonight. Marco Rubio is in tonight. Uh, we'll also check in with Hugh Hewitt. It was nice of them to let him ask two questions at the debate. We'll get into that. We'll deal with the issue of whether or not American values and Islamic values are combat- compatible with uh, Brigitte Gabriel, Imam Sadiq, and uh, also Dr. Robert Jeffers. 10 Eastern, Hannity. Oh, and the latest on that kid with the clock, Ahmad. 10 Eastern, Hannity Fox. Thanks for being with us back here tomorrow.